Greetings, everybody. It is the Ash Heritor, and welcome back to Rogue Trader. In the previous episode, we ventured to, you know, some distant stars and fought off a Xenos raid around uh, Dargonus with the uh, slight problem of we didn't actually go down to Dargonus itself. Apparently, we were supposed to do that. I don't know. Uh, the game didn't convey that. I guess it probably did. I just missed it. I thought... We deal with the Xenos fleet. Problem solved. Because we got that pretty quickly. And then we fucked off and uh, left Dargonus to its fate. Which was perhaps not the best idea in the world. But, uh, you know, now apparently it doesn't matter anymore. Because we we've got all the time in the uh, the world or the galaxy. Colony of Kiabagama has become a begun a new stage of development. Okay, so does that mean I can do more developments on Kiavagama? Uh -oh. Lord Captain, after the decompression of Lady Theodora's secret workshop on Kiavagama, an epidemic of mysterious tech leprosy has broken out. Ah, tech leprosy. Just what they needed. Augments mutate into distorted forms, killing their hosts and the machines. Even entire assembly halls break apart into fragments that devour each other melding into grotesque and insane forms. The Omega-18 Manufactorum, the epicenter of the epidemic, is cordoned off, but the disease will burst out of there sooner or later. What is known about this sickness? We have not faced anything like this before. The plague only affects mechanisms, forcing them to transform and lose all functionality. Nobody knows the nature of this disease and how it found its way into Lady Theodora's secret workshop. It is possible that some secret research was being carried out there. Almost certainly. And this sounds suspiciously like the obliterator virus, which, uh, that would be bad. <laughs> if you don't know what that is. Uh, obliterators are what happen when Chaos Space Marines get infected with a... Chaos scrap code virus called the obliterator virus. Which causes them to fuse with their armor and weapons. And they basically just pick up more weapons and more of that fuses into them and they become this, like, horrific type of monstrosity that can sort of warp their forms into all manner of different weaponry, and uh, they're pretty scary. I don't know if the new lore on them is still the same. Uh, I don't know what the new stats are. Like, I I used to play a long time ago, um, back with the old uh, metal, the big bulky metal obliterator models, which are just absolutely horrible to put together. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah. They were pretty cool, though. They were very good. I wish to listen to the suggestions of my advisors. Eradicating the infection is our highest priority, but to completely eradicate the Manufactorum epicenter would mean inflicting serious damage to our resource supply. This unit, I can propose another method of purging. However, the sacraments of the Omnissiah that are available to me cannot be revealed to the laity. I ask that you place your trust in me. Pascal has been, um, very hit and miss when it comes to being worthy of trust. So, we're gonna see what everybody else has to say. I might go with this, because in this case, it probably is more in line with what he knows. Shirin, do not be so hasty with this purge. This phenomenon may be of interest to other specialists. There are many who do not agree that all knowledge belongs solely to the cogs. What happens to be a plague could hold amazing possibilities. If we could isolate the Manufactorum and let these inquisitive minds inside, they would happily compensate us for the loss of production capacity. That sounds like a terrible idea, Jai. I have suppressed 18 different epidemics aboard the flagship, and our officers have experience in setting up quarantines. We will send them to Kiavagama and lead the Tech Purgator squads. They will not return from the epicenter until the infection is eradicated and the preventative exclusion zone is taken down. Alright, I think it's between Abelard and uh, Pascal, and I'm going to just let the game mechanics decide here. So, uh, if we side with Pascal, refugees from the Lost Manufactorum. Oh, we get plus 20 to all Void Shield sectors. That's pretty good. The tech priests who survived the tech leprosy outbreak have proven their worth and thus earned the right to serve aboard the rogue trader ship. And we can let um, Abelard do this. Enemies suffer minus 5% to their armor penetration. And the Omnissiah's favor is with the vanquisher of the tech leprosy epidemic. Uh, I think this is better. Um, ah, this would be the only option without the... Oh, whoa. Oh, man, 
get us a lot of rep with the Casbalica mission, though. Vessel of Tech Leprosy. It's a consumable. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Deals 50 to 100 shock damage with 30% armor penetration. It also inflicts two stacks of perplexed until the start, until the end of combat. At the start of each of the target's turns, it gains an additional plus one stack of perplexed. So perplexed does... Damn, that's... These are really good. It costs three AP to use. But like... That's a lot of damage. And it's a sizable area. And this debuff is good. And it's got good armor penetration. Uh, this is like clearly the the very tempting, but I think this is gonna have some adverse consequences. I'm gonna let Pascal do as you wish, Pascal. You have my permission. Your request is accepted. I shall withdraw to perform the sacrament. The tech priests, armed with a mysterious device they assembled under the instructions of Pascal, have gone into the bowels of the Manufactorum. What happened there is unknown. Reports speak of a blue and green flash that illuminated the Manufactorum, and the epidemic subsided overnight. The distorted mechanisms have been honorably melted down, and so were the bodies of the dead tech priests who carried the machine of the Magos Honeyman, as well as the burnt remains of the machine itself. Magos Pascal has, had refused to comment on his chosen method of purging, calling it a revelation of the Omnissiah that he himself could not comprehend before the device was given over. Oh, great. What have we done? Many of the tech priests who had once maintained the manufacturer were left without a function and transferred to serve aboard the rogue trader's ship. Okay, and we have completed flawless servitors. So, future ship encounters. We'll have some cool stuff. We have another thing here. Oh, giants. Oh. Um... And mobile extractions. Uh, yes, please. Sounds good to me. Um, alright, we're gonna warp to Langren's Belt. And then we're gonna head to Foulstone, because there's something going on over there. I don't think going back to, uh, Dargonus now, uh, is going to count as, you know, getting there in time. Whoa. How we're gonna work that into the narrative, because it's a bit stupid, like, I, I feel like the game should have, like, once we got to Dargonus and completed the Void battle around Dargonus, the game should have mandatorily pulled us down, or at least given us some sort of cue that something's going down on the planet, so that we would have a uh, an incentive to land. So, that, that feels like a, a little bit of a, uh, a dearth in communication coming from the game. Um, so we're just going to say that uh, everything's been under radio silence, and curiously, when we sent uh, Vox Communications down to the planet, they told us all was clear, but perhaps that is not the case. <laughs> so we're just going to assume everything's fine until we go back to uh, Dargonus. So that's going to be our, uh, our little narrative explanation. Some uh, Drukari trickery happening. All right, Telekos Epsilon is Janus. We don't need to go there. We're just gonna head to Foulstone, which is right here. All right, let's uh, let's have a look. Is this Foulstone? Yeah, right. Yeah, Foulstone, right down there. All right, let's check out Foulstone. We gotta get there. There's something going on. So let's zoom our way on over. Remember, guys, if you're enjoying this series, do drop this video a like. Even at this stage in the series, it uh, still helps out the channel. It's, uh, you know, this this playthrough's been maintaining a steady following. So those of you who have made it this far, thank you for uh, sticking with it. It's awesome. I, I like it when a, uh, you know, a series that I make kind of, you know, there's just a group of people watching it and I keep watching it, engaging in the comments. All, all the comments are, are very fun to read. So, uh... Thank you to everybody that has been doing all of that. It's, uh, it's a good sign. Definitely uh, gives me all the inspiration I need to keep a series going. Of course, there's always other factors involved. Um, but uh, I don't think we're going to have to worry about any of those for Rogue Trader. Unless some game-breaking bug happens. But uh, I think most of those have been sorted. Uh, let's see here. Nothing to be done. They did... Uh, 
requires the Lord Captain's decision. The planetary authorities wish to found a new settlement that would expand their influence on the planet. Okay, we can approve the plan to get plus two efficiency. We can support constructs with resources to gain plus three efficiency. It's probably going to cost us something. Or we can inspire the people to support construction efforts. Hmm. It's not giving us further details, so I reckon there's a hidden cost and a hidden drawbacks. Or that, yeah, that is the cost. Hidden cost and maybe some extra uh, hidden benefits. I'm going to support the construction with resources. This seems like it's going to have the highest cost, but also the longest, or the, the best tangible benefits. The scale of the new complex will exceed its architect's original designs. Fantastic. Okay, so does this open up new things for us? It does not. All right. Did we need to go to Falstone for this? I don't think so. I feel like we could have just sent an astropathic message. But then again, we don't really have a fleet. Though it's kind of implied that our planets do have their own little fleets. So, and it's so nice. Yeah, I can't remember who uh, who left the comment of, like, recommending that just establish a safe warp corridor between all of your planets. Brilliant idea. Because you do indeed warp between your own planets quite often. So I think, like, we're done with exploration. I don't think there's anything else here. I will quickly check my colonies before we drop back into, uh... Is anything new happening? No. So we just probably need to wait. Okay. Get some more Apexalium stimulants and the better medkits. Fantastic. And anything else we can build on Janus. So we can do the reaping. We've completed giants, which will allow us to do the reaping, huh? Not even the sprawling agri complexes of Janus can cover the whole planet's fertile expansion. Gargantuan tract mega harvesters will come to their aid. They will wander the planet for months, each one operated by its assigned clan of serfs who born who are born, live, and die in the bowels of these great machines. These giants will reap harvests with their toothed jaws, break open the soil with their plasteel plows, and drink the swampy lowlands dry with their thirsty hydro pumps, spewing the water forth down upon the arid hills. Uh. Impending ecological disaster? Who cares? All in the name of profit. All right. Let's actually go to Dargonus. I have it kind of, you know, I've been reading into people's uh, comments and everything. It seems like this is probably going to be the transition to Act 3. And I don't, I don't like, view that as a spoiler or anything. Um, it's just naturally culminating also. Like, there's nothing more really for us to do. Unless we go back to uh, Footfall first. Fuck, we did want to go back to Footfall first. There's things I still wanted to do there. My apologies. Sorry for wasting uh, you guys' time with that. Uh, I could edit it out, but... Uh, that's probably... Hold on. This is the quickest way. Oh, we should have gone around that way. It would be the safer way. It's fine. We'll go through that. Two profit factor gained. Uh, the clan's service and cooling systems have reported an incident of sorcery. The shadows in the cabins and corridors are coming to life. The voidsmen say they see strange writhing things lurk in nooks and crannies at the edge of their vision. If they look away, the things spread over the room, gnawing on everything in their path and attacking the weak and infirm. The strange creatures cannot be caught. It is almost as if they sense they are being watched and sink into the many cracks between the machines and bulkheads. Oh, sounds like the hounds of Tindalos. Uh, we can do a willpower test, 80% chance, or ballistic skill. Dex purified with fire. Now, order that the monsters be banished with faith and prayer. I think we can manage. The Ecclesiarchy mission on board the Void Ship held sermons in every corner of the haunted chamber, and the many voiced chants and holy rituals manifested their power, and the demons skulking in the cracks vanished without a trace. The crew was, was cheered, and they praised the God Emperor for his protection. Fantastic. All right. Telecos Epsilon. And... Trinitos. I think this is a direct route to Furibundus. Indeed. Um, however, there's one more thing I want to quickly do. Because we got quite a bit of profit factor. 
I want to see if there's new things to buy. I bet there will be. And I can also check on our reputation and see if uh, there's anything we can sell. I don't think we have too many new things to sell, but we can always uh, give it a try. I suppose I could have done this on the actual uh, station, but I'm going to do it up here. It's a little quicker than running around. All right, uh, let's see here. Let me do this, right? Uh, this is what's going to let us uh, sell things. So I do want to sell... Actually, we can almost get to... Ooh, hello there. Deadly Repeater, huh? That's pretty good. I mean, these are all good. Stun grenades. We're almost done here with the uh, Explorators. And the Force Emitter. Force Field Emitter. After using Run and Gun, the wearer gains 15% cover efficiency when in cover for one round. That's, that's good. And the Repeater is good. Okay. And uh, let's check the Kasbalik mission. Nothing new. We need to... Uh, wait, hold on. Yeah. I wonder if more stuff is going to unlock... Uh, with these later. I hope so, because we are kind of getting to the end of all of the different things we can buy. And there are still multiple acts of this campaign left. Okay. Oh yeah, that is just straight better. 69 profit factor. Nice. Um... Right, nothing? Yeah, I just, I just looked at this. And then we can make some purchases. No, make some sales. Do we do that here, too? I think so. Yeah, yeah, we do that here. Alright, not with them. Let's check the, uh, the Adeptus Mechanicus. Okay, so we can give them some Holy Gifts. We don't need to do much, so I'm gonna give them one thing of Holy Gifts here, which is gonna immediately unlock the Focus Melta Gun. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. 70% armor penetration. This <laughs> is, uh, quite solid. So we can get to 21 here. Would cost us 2,000 rep. We could do it. Easily. Uh, because this armor... The Tempestus Carapace. Would be pretty good. But I feel like we might be able to get more rep through other means. So I'm gonna leave that. And we'll get some rep with, uh... With these lads here. I don't want too much, but we got Xenos artifacts. I'm just going to give them everything that we can. Quite untradeable. Oop. 2,600. Okay. We're at rank 7 with them, so we can get the Psyker's Breastplate here. It's a heavy... Okay, reduces the chance of triggering Psychic Phenomena by 10%. If any Psychic Phenomena or Perils of the Warp manifest, the Psyker gains... An additional plus one Psy rating. Holy crap, we're giving that to Adira as soon as possible. That's going to actually probably make her pretty good. And then this Calibrated Heavy Stubber. Which, uh, yeah, requires 60 strength to use, but can put out quite a lot of Daka. Okay, I'll give that a try. I don't know who is going to give it a try, but I'm sure somebody will at some point. And then, uh, let's give some stuff to the Fellowship of the Void. Right? Give them everything... Do it this way. This is quicker and easier. Yeah, I mean, everything. 3,000. Okay, we are close. I don't think we... Oh, we did get more. Um, so we have the armored body glove here, which gives 10% dodge against extra range attack and two extra movement. Okay. And two more large med kits. Okay. Then I guess uh, the Drusians here. We got more things to sell. That's a holy gift. Okay. Dark Visionary Hood. Plus 10 bonus to willpower, 15% damage to psychic and navigator powers, but inflicts a minus 10 penalty to weapon skill and ballistic skill. Sounds like a Cassia item, maybe. And I guess I'm just going to sell the rest of the Explorators. Or uh, to Kasbalica. I don't think anybody... Yeah, we don't have anything else. All of the other stuff is uh, not sellable. Unless there's uh, things we can sell here. Yeah, there are. Probably Void Trophies. 
Why the hell not? Also add this to cargo. Yep. Do it. Okay. So that's all of the uh, the sales that we can do. Let's equip some items. So first things first, we're going to give the Dark Visionary Hood to Cassia. Can we uh, sort this properly? By type? Thank you. Actually, maybe by uh, newest to oldest. We can actually check the recent items that we got. Uh, ooh, Face of the Sovereign is good, but anyone can benefit from Face of the Sovereign. Oh, it doesn't actually show up on her. I thought maybe it would look really cool. Um, hmm. Unless we have her hiding... Do we have her hiding? No. She should be showing helmet, but maybe she just doesn't show helmet. What about you? Do you actually wear this? You already have a hood. Um, <laughs> the cultist hood. <laughs> that's, that's fairly cool. Um, but I'm going to keep the cultist hood on her. I think that's going to be fine. I might take the Dark Visionary Hood for myself. Depending on what I am wearing. Mm. No, what I'm wearing is quite good. Alright, it's gonna go to Katia then. Screw it. I wanted the visual appearance of a hood with, like, eye protection. An upper face mask, but whatever. Uh, then there is this one. So, what am I wearing? It's 45% armor. It is reducing my dodge, however. But this does give me more lore Imperium, and I benefit from that. Idira, you might benefit from this. Extra movement. Actually, hold on. Extra movement speed. Who needs movement speed here? You do. This is just better. In every way. And it keeps his, like, normal-looking appearance, which is pretty cool. Okay, the Psyker's Breastplate. Uh, I would like to give to Idira, but she presumably can't wear heavy armor. No. Okay, then the then there is the matter of the Deadly Repeater, which I might equip myself, because this looks better than the Hunting Rifle. Um, or I give it to somebody else. Maybe, maybe to... Uh, no, she's got her Hex Rifle. I'm going to keep her with that Hex Rifle. Unless we give... Or the Hex Rifle. This is 20 to 25. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> the the Wanderer's Portend is much better. Okay, uh, then we don't need that. So, oh, you do have the, the, the Scorpion Chainsword. But, yeah, this is a better, like, defensive weapon. You could use this. You just aren't very good in melee, so it might not be worth it. However, we have a Shard Carbine here. I'm not sure if that's worth it. It doesn't do very much damage. So, the Repeater, then, is going to go to somebody. I might take it myself, then. It's a lot of damage. Plus, it looks pretty cool. We have this Archaeotech Lasgun, as well. Um, where's the hunting rifle? I think we can get rid of this. Okay, um, yeah, that's good. Improved injector. Don't really care about that so much. Oh, finally, a use for carouse. Yeah, Robert, you even mentioned, like, carouse is a not very frequently used skill, but here is actually a pretty good use for it. It's not bad. To somebody that uses combat stimulants, but... I mean, she could. But the items she has are, are too good. Um, so, run and gun. The characters that can use run and gun are... Where are my soldiers? It's just Argenta. Right? You're the only one, I think. Unless I'm completely blanking on somebody else. Plus 15 Medicaid. Uh, I'm going to take the force field emitter over the Medicaid, because this is just better. Extra cover efficiency. Then we'll have the first aid manual, of course, still on her. 
still quite effective. Uh, this melt gun I know we just, like, respect him a little bit for plasma, but this melt gun is good. It's got way less range. The armor penetration is better. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. The plasma gun... Yeah, you'll get more damage out of the focus melt gun. However, the plasma gun here is, I think, still going to be the better option for him. So, we'll leave that. Uh, as for the ship, we will equip that right now. Might as well. Where the hell am I? Okay, then we're going to head to uh, Footfall and be done with it. Because I think Jai wants to have a party, so we'll have a nice party while our capital burns. The Ultimo Array. Yes, please. And then you're going into cargo. Okay. Visit Furibundus. Head to Footfall. We can also bring Jai along to... Um, the Lieges place, because that might be funny. Shireen, if you spare a minute on Footfall when you are not deciding our lackluster fates... I would be delighted to see you at my Amaricar in the Amasicus. I'll tell Octi to set aside some decent wine in case you decide to grace our humble party with your luminous presence. Amaricar, is that some kind of celebration? It is an occasion celebrated on my world, Ifrit. It is the day when a person shows by their actions that they have reached maturity and that their spirit is ennobled. Among the Ifritian nobility, this day is considered more important than other symbolic events, such as the first cry or the day of the repose. And by a wonderful coincidence, my Markar happens to fall on the day when I also wish to celebrate my acquisition of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale. Well, it would be my pleasure to attend your party. The lowly regulars of the Amasikas will be telling their great-grandchildren about the time they had the honor of witnessing your dazzling visit to that unworthy dive, Shirin. That is, of course, if they live long enough to see their great-grandchildren. <laughs> Alright, uh, Jai is coming, of course. Uh, do we bring Eerly yet? Yeah, why not? Uh, am I gonna bring Abelard? Somebody's gotta introduce me. Cassia, you could probably do for a spell. Heinrichs, you can stay behind. I'm gonna bring Pascal. We've been bringing Heinrichs, like, everywhere. So, we'll give him a break. Oh, we're going uh, immediately here? That'd be nice. Not having to traverse. And there's still the matter of the Anvers base. Which I don't think we fully investigated. I don't know. I, like, couldn't find it. We'll see where this actually drops us. Okay, we are in the Adeptus Amasicus. Martyr's Endurance. Yeah, all right. So Always. it actually puts Keep us here. Your eye on the prize. Lovely. So we're going to find... Hold on. I brought Jai, right? Or is Jai just going to be here? I, I did not bring Jai. I could have sworn I did. I always have a backup plan. Yet I don't see her anywhere. I'm thinking maybe she um, is just like here. Who's Gordai Scaffold? The flabby man in worn clothes is sighing sadly over a glass of murky booze. When he looks up at you, only when he looks up at you do you notice his eyes, large, piercing, and full of sorrow. A stark contrast to his unkempt appearance. Could it be that someone actually wishes to keep me company? Allow me to introduce myself. Gordai Skatov, architectural historian. You look deeply despondent over something. What happened? Here I go again, pouring my heart out to have you disappear in ten minutes just like everyone else before you. But alright. Here is the story of Gordai Skatov, the unluckiest historian in the Imperium. I was born two sectors away from here. My family was quite influential, which allowed me to dedicate myself to my great passion. The history of Imperium architecture. I spent a great number of years studying every scholarly work there was to find on this art, and then, once I had inherited my family's fortune, I traveled and documented and develop uh, the development of architectural thought on different worlds. Until one day, oh, that accursed and blessed day, 
until one day I came into possession of something quite special. Gordak pulls what looks like a book or an album with the homemade leather cover out of his bag. Both the pages and the binding look well worn. Here it is, my undoing. This is an authentic booklet titled Dwayne's Design, one of the thousands that were printed centuries ago in times of Footfall's construction. What a curious read. Please tell me more. As Cassia takes a shy step forward, Gordai smiles and shows her some of the faded pages. Footfall's founder, Lord Parsimus, was obsessed with his creation's grand future. This booklet describes in detail what Footfall was meant to become upon its completion. Dozens of asteroids turned into glorious palaces and temples. Massive bridges spanning the void itself, and the marvelous flying buttresses, the archivolts of the exterior arches, the elegant arrangement of balusters, and the interior. Polyphoras ten stories tall and more than a kilometer long cyclopean light tubes that catch the light of Furibundus and use it to brighten the holes in the hearts of the asteroids, stained the glass windows and mosaics, bas reliefs and statues. Engrossed in his own description, Gordai stands up and starts tracing the outlines of arches and galleries with his hand. I eh, will keep listening. Emerging from his reverie, he catches himself, blushes slightly, and loudly flops back onto his seat. I apologize. I, I got carried away. But you must understand how deep an impression this booklet left on me when my young self picked it up. I couldn't, or I simply couldn't think about anything other than footfall. I was ready to give my life just to see this incredible station, and, of course, no matter how hard my friends and loved ones tried to dissuade me, I still gathered all my savings and set out on the journey. It is no easy feat to cross two sectors, especially for a common citizen, albeit one who has some resources at his disposal. I had to change one ship after another, at times being forced to stay on transfer worlds waiting for a vessel headed in the right direction, or for warp disturbances to subside. The voyage took me a total of 107 years, in real space time of course. For me it was much less than that, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 or 35. And then, after all those years, having spent all my savings, I reached my dream. <laughs> and what did I see? A dump, in place of the exquisite portico, metal anthills clinging to the columns, the marble tiles pilfered by paupers to use as cladding for their hovels. Gordai hangs his head. It's been a dozen years since I came here, and I still haven't recovered from the shock. I had expected that not everything from the booklet would exist in reality, but I never expected to see footfall in such a sorry state. It is like so stumbling upon a horrible decomposing corpse of your beautiful beloved. Argenta's gaze darkens. The warp, like a shameless thief, is guilty of stealing the short span allotted to his servants. But what sense is there in spending half your life on such an enterprise only then to lose your spirit and waste the remaining half on nothing at all? So then ink and paper too can lie and cause pain? Cassia sighs sadly. Does this mean that all I have ever read about will one day disappoint me with the ugliness of reality? <laughs> Poor Cassia. But you're, an, but you're an architectural historian. Is what happened to Footfall not part of its history? Gordai strokes his goatee in thought. Yes, Footfall's current appearance, plums fused together with the remains of majestic palaces, is a unique phenomenon. It would be curious to observe if other places have taken after it, thereby solidifying it as a new style of architecture. Or if it still remains a local oddity. My word, you certainly know how to provide an unexpected perspective on things. Be that as it may, I just wanted to say, thank you for hearing me out. Over the dozen years I've spent on Footfall, not one person has hung around long enough to listen to my story to the end. It's such a delight to have shared everything that's been weighing on my mind. I'm poor as a church mouse, but I still have something to offer you as a token of my appreciation. After studying the booklet thoroughly, I discovered something interesting. A ciphered message scattered throughout its pages, taking the form of a riddle. It describes certain places of interest on Footfall. I believe it is the work of the booklet's creators. What if these riddles lead to something? A wondrous discovery. I will gladly share what I've been able to learn with you. Riddles? A flash of burning, almost childish curiosity brightens Cassia's austere countenance. Have you not tried to make this wondrous discovery for yourself? I have, of course, but I'm an old man who is blind in one eye and can barely move his legs. I never found anything, but that doesn't mean there's nothing to find. 
Tell me about these places these riddles lead to. The first location from the riddles isn't far from here. It's a bridge that was supposed to go through the center of this district and into the void towards the neighboring asteroid. But only a couple of its spans were built, and even those lie in ruins. Still, if the cache survived after all those years, it is there somewhere. The second location is the Lantern of the Great Cathedral. A lantern is a small tower atop the dome. You've seen Footfall's atrium, haven't you? The whole atrium is just the nave of the former little cathedral. The liege's entire so-called palace would have fit inside what was meant to be not but a single room. The great cathedral, had it been built, would have been even bigger. But alas, its construction was just getting underway when Dwayne died and the work stopped. The lantern from its dome, however, was already built and survived. It was brought inside the atrium and dubbed the Chapel of St. Drusus and the Warrior. Okay. And that's all I know. I wish you luck in your search. Very well. I must take him. I must take my leave. Good luck to you. Okay. So we can go to the former lantern and the other place. The, uh... The collapsed, broken down bridge. There's Jai. Alright, cool. She is here. You easily spot Jai in a group crowded around the table. The extravagant luxury of her attire and her gleaming augment set her apart from the rest. Seeing you, she exclaims, May the gravitational wells on your worlds never lack for grip, just as my heart never lacks for joy at the sight of Rogue Trader Von Valancius. <laughs> With an approving chuckle, Octaviana mutters, what, did, what accent did I give her? I have no idea. I can't believe you actually roped the rogue trader into coming to your party. If the rogue trader raises a toast to your health, I'll start to believe you really are a princess, not just the smuggler with the gift of the gab. Please take a seat, your ladyship. I'll gladly accept your offer. All right. Octaviana draws out a bottle from under the table. The glass is as thick as your finger and is covered in wax seals. With no exaggeration, this is the finest amasek that has ever graced this bar. Jai personally acquired it, as she says, for a special occasion. It seems that you are that special occasion, your ladyship. The crowd around the table falls silent, exchanging awkward looks. It would appear they are accustomed to drinking in the presence, or it would appear they are unaccustomed to drinking in the presence of lofty individuals such as you. Let us drink to the hour, or to the lady of the hour, Jai Hadari. The assembled group bursts into approving cheers, and the bar fills with the sound of clinking glasses. The Amasek tastes exorbitantly expensive, sweeping you into a kaleidoscope of flavors, tart floral bitterness, honeyed sweetness, and then other far more refined sensations that are nameless, owing to the small number who can afford to experience them. <laughs> Bravo, Octi. This Amasek will do me very well, very well indeed. Jai's self-satisfied reply elicits general laughter, and the tension at the table seems to loosen slightly. Octaviana, you and Jai are friends. Octaviana offers you an arch smile. Friends, she's my most or she's my worst enemy. A vengeful spirit of retribution sent to punish me for my youthful transgressions. Mistress Hidari has a special gift for knocking me off balance and dragging me into difficulty. I would have barred her from the Amasekas long ago if it weren't for her habit of tossing money around like confetti and paying triple for anything she breaks. <laughs> Do see, Shirin. Do you see the pretty, miserly, callous, unforgiving friends the Exalted One has sent me? <laughs> yes, so these are your friends. The precious roses in the garden of my in the garden of my soul and the golden little bees that bring honeyed riches to my treasure house. Yes, this is my crew of cold traders. The two identical ones are the trickster twins, my closest associates. Kor, a resident, a resident hothead, and his much wiser sister, Tora. Don't let her fool you, your ladyship. She's only calling us, me, a precious rose because you're here. When it's just us, I'm lucky if I get that asshole with a gun. <laughs> he chuckles good-naturedly. <laughs> But you are the asshole with the gun. If I dragged you out of as many scrapes as Jai has, that's not the name I'd be using for you. I can tell you that much. Kor's sister rolls her eyes. Pay no attention to his, your ladyship. Kor has nobody to blame but himself for that nickname. Uh-oh.
Falco. The man who has approached the table is hideous by anyone's standards. A repulsive face, greasy hair, and bulging veins at his temple. His attempt at an amiable smile is so transparently false and off-putting that your fingers itch to reach for your weapon. With a surprised look askance at you, he says, Mistress Adari, allow me to wish you a happy America. Master Mercy could not let such an occasion go unmarked. He sends his warm wishes and a gift. In Mercy's gift, while in combat, the wearer of this cloak gains plus 15 to fellowship whenever there are no enemies in a 4-cell radius. Ooh, that's good. That's good. It's good for me and Jai. More good for me. Oh, Falco, I am much obliged and touched by your presence. May the fire in your heart burn forever bright and hot like the stars of Dremnor's system. Tell Mercy that this show of his precious attention towards my humble self rubbed dew to my eyes and a song to my heart. Uh, oh, yeah. So we're whispering to Octaviana. Isn't Falco the one that stole Jai's cargo? The very same. The greasy piece of grok shit, Octaviana says, wearing the sweetest, most amiable smile one could imagine. <laughs> but the stars of the Gremnor system all died around 100,000 years ago, and the systems around me, or around them, are a true breeding ground of death. <laughs> Is it customary in the Kasbalika to attend to the parties of people that you have tried to ruin? After you get involved in their turf war, they all decided that the peaceful resolution would be for the best. This here is a symbolic confirmation of the ceasefire. So, who is this Mercy? Some big mysterious figure in the mission. The Kasbalika's put in here to keep a handle on things and to make sure the interests of the senior par partners aren't forgotten. If anyone does something a bit forgetful, Mercy comes alone. Someone dies. Everyone else panics and empties their pockets. <laughs> Falco and Mercy aren't officially connected. Falco's just another prosperous mission like Jai and other people, but Falco's happy to do Mercy's dirty work for him, and that's why he gets preferential treatment. Um... Where is your present for Jai, Falco? The smuggler stares at you unblinkingly with his pale eyes, saying nothing. Then he rearranges his mouth into a smile remarkable in its hideousness. Of course, your ladyship. And this gift is from me personally, Mr. Sadari. Exotic Venom Blade. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Oh, is he gonna stab, try and stab her with it? No? Okay. As Falco turns away from the table, you see a snarl of feral hatred twist his already repulsive figures. Not features, I mean. Even foes are bowing down before Jai Hadari. That is something worth celebrating. And what a better way to celebrate than with a game with stakes, naturally. Today is my Amarikar, and that's what I want. <laughs> Jai draws a stack of carved plasteel tiles from her pocket. They're decorated with symbols and fine mag lines, holding the tiles in one hand and raising her glass with another. Jai asks, What do you think, Shireen? Does the rogue trader have anything she's willing to wager? Is this going to be another game of space strip poker? <laughs> you recognize the tiles in Jai's hand. It is a set for Tanto Lo, a game popular among gamblers. Each player is dealt several tiles, which can be arranged into a pattern of a specific value by carefully matching up the mag lines. Whoever has the highest value wins. Voidsmen love playing Tantalo, which is usually won by luck or skill. Yeah, I'll play. I'll raise my goblin in salute. I shall play. Watch out for her ladyship, lads. She has she was awfully quick to agree just now. I have a sneaking suspicion about how the rogue trader acquired all her countless riches, but I'll warn you now, playing for money is considered wrong on the street because gaming is a tempting fate. Or because gaming is tempting fate. So instead, we're going to play for the wishes. A pile of tiles is placed in front of you and the other players. I'm going to look at my hand. Logic 45, 8%. You've been dealt a poor hand. You cannot make a high value arrangement from the tiles. Hmm. Glancing at her tiles and grinning, Jai declares resolutely, I'm going to show my... The Exalted One loves me today. And if one doesn't show one's hand, what then? Then you have a chance to bow out of the game without losing. 
But you can only do that before someone announces they're going to show their hand. Hmm, without losing, huh? I, I'm not sure uh, how this is going to go. I'm going to drop my tiles on the table. No luck. Yeah, we'll do that. No luck. <laughs> Chuckling, Giant tosses her tiles onto the table. Her hand is significantly better than yours or anyone else's. Hmm, I wonder why. As for my wish, I want everyone to drink to my good fortune. It has already granted me a gift fit for a queen. I'm talking about you, Shirin. May fortune continue to smile upon me. <laughs> everyone at the table eagerly raises their glasses. You join in before you're even aware of... You have done so. A new stack of tiles is already waiting for you on the table. You realize that moments have skipped past without your knowing. It seems the Amasek is somewhat stronger than you thought. Logic minus five. <laughs> Look at your hand. <laughs> Failed. The pictures on the tile are spinning slightly, arranging themselves in good patterns and then offensive phrases. <laughs> When you look up, you see that everyone else apart from Jai has already tossed their tiles onto the table in disappointment. It's just us two left, Shirin. I'm going to show my hand. Lay <laughs> out <are> your tiles. <laughs> Read them and weep. <laughs> the sight of your hand sets everyone at the table into a flurry of excitement. But then that chatter turns into a roar of triumph. Jai's hand is the most valuable in the game. <laughs> I win again. What should I wish of you, Sir Shirin? <laughs> I'm drunk, so we gotta roleplay that I'm drunk. <laughs> Given your profession, I would extract a promise of my assistance should you ever find yourself in trouble in the future. <laughs> you promised to save me. What an exciting adventure that could turn out to be. It's almost worth getting into trouble for. I accept your stake. <laughs> Tiles are dispersed around the table, forming piles in front of each player's. You suddenly feel your body growing heavy. The treacherous Amasek is slowly robbing you of your clarity, thought, and dexterity. Logic 30. We can look at my tiles. Oh, I have a, uh, I have a good chance. We're not going to accuse her of cheating. We already know she is. Your hand is not especially good or bad. It is the kind of hand that could be played by someone desperate who has nothing left to bet. Before anyone says they're showing their hand, I'm announcing a condition. Seeing as it's my America today, the only stake I'll play for is a dance. I'm gonna try and cheat. 60% chance. <laughs> we play. So that's a dance with Jai? Or, or do I need to dance? How do I need to dance? If I beat her, does she need to dance? Fucking, I'm gonna try and cheat. She's cheating, obviously. 60% chance. Though maybe she isn't cheating. And it's like a, a big no-no. I don't know. It could be either one with her. I would assume if she caught me cheating, she would be like, nice try. And, you know, lap it off. No, I'm just gonna show my hand. We'll be honest. <laughs> Glancing at your hand, Jai discards her own tiles face down. My not worse. Looks like you've won, Shireen. I'll be delighted to grant you a wish. Alright, Jai is dancing on the table. <laughs> the light on, plays on Jai's dark skin and glints off her silver augmentic on her throat. Moving with the grace of a sand snake, she holds your gaze and smiles mischievously. Her dark curls fall across her face and you see the saucy glint in her eyes through her alluring curtain of hair. Ooh. <laughs> this dance is called the Dance of the Captive... Ravenayan girl. When the governor of Ifrit, Selim Khan the Bright, crushed the Ravenayan rebellion, the daughter of the rebel leader was brought to him, the beautiful Nayana. She danced for him, telling him of the struggle of her proud people, and they snatched a weapon from a guard's hand and aimed it at Selim Khan. But the spark of love had kindled between them, and that day stopped the Faisalin from igniting in the cartridge. And both Nayana and Selim Khan lived through that day and made many more days, which they spent together. <laughs> Alright. That is enough betting for me. My luck is very fickle today. Unlike Amasek, you can always trust Amasek. It always lies. Smiling sweetly, Giant presses your goblet into your hand. Her skin seems to glow from within, and sparks of laughter in her eyes dance like flames. I, I see she's hitting on me, but I'm not I'm not I'm not biting. 
to Amasex Deceit. <laughs> May the deceived and not live to regret it. Fog swaddles your mind in appealing ideas of other ways you could amuse yourself at this party. Surrendering to the maelstrom of chaotic thoughts, you let the all-pervading merriment determine your fate. Oh boy. We'll see where this ends up. <laughs> a bit of uh, a bit of amusement after a couple of uh, uh, I'd say a couple, but like fifteen darker episodes. Jai adds a bit of lightheartedness to uh, Rogue Trader, which is always good. Oop, I see. At least we still have our clothes on. Thoughts tumble violently inside your head, periodically ricocheting off the inside of your skull and triggering bursts of piercing pain. Your tongue feels desiccated and shriveled in your mouth, and it scrapes painfully against your teeth. Light. Light is the enemy. Oh, yeah. I, I relate to this. <laughs> on a regular basis, though not even because of alcohol. <laughs> Sometimes because of alcohol, admittedly, but not not very frequently. I'm not a, uh, a regular drinker. <laughs> but this sensation, this happens more often. Ugh. Light is always the enemy. Self-awareness returns unbidden, bringing with it an inexplicable sense of awkwardness. Your beleaguered body violently protests against the very idea of getting out of your soft bed. Yeah, also relate to that. You hear a soft sigh beside you. Looking over, you see dark hair fanned out across your pillow. Jai, who is cozied up next to you, fast asleep, is fully dressed, just as you are. Or perhaps she is not asleep at all. <laughs> Shireen, you certainly know how to have a good time. <laughs> Carouse, try and end the... Try and remember the end of the party. <laughs> you struggle to piece together your fragmented memories of last night's carousing. For some reason, you can clearly recall the ingratiated looks of the wardens as they tried to persuade you to stop. The cries of the beggars who gave you an obscenely... <laughs> who you gave an obscene <laughs> amount of alms, and the stamping of the servitors you... <laughs> that you rode around the station in Jai's unconcealed... or to Jai's unconcealed glee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did the night end? I don't remember all of it, I think. We shot at some people, over their heads. Someone didn't offer us the required amount of respect. Then you said that flying a shuttle was easy and that you would bet your warrant that you could get us to the ship. We also stripped a man and burnt his clothes because the sight of them offended the exalted one. I can still smell the singed fibers now. Oh my god. And how precisely did you end up in my chambers? I helped you to get back to your quarters, and then I couldn't find the door to get out again. <laughs> and you graciously gave up 35% of your bed for me. Yes, I think that's the number our haggling ended on. <laughs> uh, you and I, we did not fall into bed together just to sleep, did we? <laughs> Lapsing into quiet laughter, Jai replies gently, No, Shireen, your conduct was entirely becoming of a rogue traitor. Okay. <laughs> we need to make ourselves presentable. I'm sorry to say you're right, Shireen. No matter how soft the bed or how pleasant the company, there is a line we must not cross, and I am perilously close to doing exactly that by getting a couple of bottles of dangerous medicine for our aching heads. <laughs> <laughs> You know, every now and then you gotta you gotta blow off some steam. <laughs> Party with Jai, <laughs> which was as uh, as dangerous as you might expect. Where am I? <laughs> Is this my quarters? <laughs> How do I get out of here? I understand Jai's problem. <laughs> I can't find the exit. <laughs> oh, maybe it's over here. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> Uh, I really hope nobody else has anything to say about this, Heinrichs. To what do I owe this visit? Okay. Um, no, you're not saying anything? Fantastic. Hopefully nobody... Oh man, Irliet's gonna be, like, really disappointed in me. Hell on talk. But apparently she wasn't aware of what was happening, so that's good. Um, I guess we go back to Footfall. 
All right. Because we got to find this Anvers base. We just investigated this dark hideout. I feel like I've been here before, but... And it, it's, like, not in... It's not visible from the Adeptus Amasikas. Um, but then again, I don't recognize this, and there are definitely Anvers here, so... Uh, okay. Apparently this is where it was. This was, like, a, visible the entire time, but... Alright, uh, okay. Anver Kingpin. The man with a shaggy mop of dark hair is dressed and armed about as well as everyone else in here. He, and yet he is unmistakably the leader. He takes a step towards you. He chuckles. He spreads his arms wide in a welcoming gesture. My guests, what a joy it is to see you in my humble refuge. I see you've come here to be introduced to the truth. Which will you choose, then? Words, fire, or metal? You already know the answer, heretic. Argenta grabs her weapon. Hmm. If you have something to say, then say it. I will. Your time has passed. All of you. Bureaucrats, the Casbalica, rogue traitors, conceited aristocracy, and other worthless trash. All of you will soon burn. Do you even know what our name means, outsider? Footfall calls us the Anvers, and they do not stop to look, listen, learn. The man pauses then half closes his eyes and proclaims, in crude but clear high gothic, Auxilio non veniet, help will not come. The mall has closed. The coronus expanse is on its own now. A new era has come, and we are its sovereigns. What you doing there? What you, what you churning up in there? Your arrogance will be your downfall. Poison? Cross them. Oh, Christ. Everything's poison. Oh, this is, uh, source. Cassia. Cassia, what did you do? Oh, okay. No, it's just sourced from everyone. All right. Uh, so, uh, there's, there's a lot of poison here. Apparently. Uh, I wish I had those anti-poison things, but I do not anymore. I'm going to put the scallop there. Abelard, you're going to run over this way. Abelard's going to go and duel the, uh, the leader kill him as quick as possible. Cassia, you can stand right here and just lidless stare everyone. Jai is gonna have a fucking field day um, shooting people. I'm gonna go right here. We should be fine. Alright, I'll, right, I'll give off. myself a turn right now. I'm gonna give a turn to Cassia. On it. Because Cassia can deal with, like, all of these guys. Look at this. Oh my god. Isn't this Goodbye. For the the fury of House or Celio. No dead. Okay. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Let's give, um, reveal the light to I myself. Made. Should've done that first, but that's okay. For next turn. Now it's my turn again. Oh, wow, look at that. So, these guys don't have very much health. This is clearly a very low-level encounter, so I'm not going to worry too much about things. Um, but let's give... Do I give Cassia? No, I can't give Cassia another turn, so I'm going to give Jai a turn. Because she should be able to do some damage. Who? If not me. So, where can we put some Daka? We can put some Daka down this way. You've got way. a problem. I've got a price. I shot one bullet. Um, Am I getting paid well, we'll for this? Assign objective onto that armed Don't get too instigator. Cocky. And then, uh, I guess I can kill it. I don't know if I need to, though. I'm going to shoot some other guy. Uh, let's see here. We got one over here. We'll I'll shoot the animal over there. Goodbye. Okay, that's my turn. Shoots me. Oh yeah, Argenta, you're also here. She's gonna run up this way, and let's switch to the bolt pistol. Drop into Face confident approach. Deeds is worthless. And uh, let's immediately put a round into. Oh, you will actually survive. I will. Oh, you will also survive. Hmm. Bolt gun, it is. He's unlikely to survive this. Fantastic. We have momentum. 
I am his will made manifest. Steady superiority. We will switch to the bolt pistol and see if there's anyone in range here. We got one right there. 52% chance. That is a 100% chance right here. So we'll do, uh, we'll drop that one. All right. He's, he's dead. I'll do it. Rebel in slaughter. Switch back to the bolt gun. And, uh, let's do... Doubt is for the weak. Wildfire. Guess we can kill... Can we shoot him already? We can't. Alright, we're gonna have to have somebody else deal with him. So, I'll we'll, do we'll it. put the rounds here. Goodbye. And then we can Faith run and gun. Without deeds is worthless. And we'll dash I'll do into it. that. Switch to uh, the bolt pistol again. And single shot this guy. Commands, I act. Cool. So she just cleared this entire area. <laughs> As usual. Jai. Uh, if you would run up this way. This battlefield air is good for my lungs. Can you drop a move, move, move? Or whatever it is. Move, move, move. Yeah. I I'd can't like do it. To, but I can't. Unavailable. Am I out of range? Is that why? I do not fully understand. Uh, okay. Tell me, and it is done. Okay, for some reason I can't target him either. I, I guess we'll use that. this the right incentive. Eh, did something. Not much. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, I'll give myself some extra help with strong Am point. Am I getting paid for this? Use that up there and uh, be done with the turn. Now it's my turn again. So I will now move right here. Maybe Watch now I back. can do it. Yeah, now someone's in range. You've got a problem? I've got a prize. So, Abelard is going to run all the way up here. My place is at the fall. Okay. And now she can give Abelard an extra turn. He won't be able to get there, though. So, that is kind of unfortunate. What can she do from here? Can't target him? Hmm. Can't do anything. Uh, I can move back, I know then. what I'm doing. Usually. I will run up here, actually. That sounds fine. Okay, we'll give... Don't uh, get too cocky. That, I don't think that matters at all. And uh, I guess it's shooting time. 84% chance. Yeah, he didn't incentive. like that. We'll also shoot him with the blaster. He didn't like that either. Tell me, and it is done. Am I getting paid for this? Okay. Cassia? So we can do. Okay, that'll allow him to charge. Unfortunately, we don't have a uh, an angle on him. So, uh, but let's see. Held in my gaze. Ah, we're in the wrong position. What if we were right here? Are always drowned in scarlet. Okay. Me. I'll give Abelard a turn. If you Abelard can charge up to. Oh, we can actually Indeed. get right to him. Here, look at that. Victory is imminent. Cautious approach, brace for I'm impact. Not interested. And let's give Glimpse of Fate to Abelard. And we'll give him this, too. I am a navigator, not a light. servitor. Extra toughness. Oh, we had momentum there. All right, he's medkitting himself. He's going to attack Abelard. Oh, there's another guy. I have a feeling you're about to meet a grisly fate. Pascal! Scout's gonna run up here. Actually, may as well just advance all the way. Uh, Cole the Bold. Drop a bounty on him. And, uh, chop chop. Goodbye. <laughs> Offhand? Oh, yeah. Plasma him. He's still alive. Then uh, let's do a uh, Machine Spirit Communion right up here. Quest approved. And a joint analysis. Okay. Let's uh, make him our sworn enemy. Not that this matters, but... We're going to chop him up real good. What does this do? Onslaught, huh? Spends all movement points? Alright. Sure. It will be done. Goodbye. Okay. You They're dead. Don't frighten me. Turn on the ventilation. Uh, yeah, that'd my be good. Ears are ringing. Ventilation back on. Yeah. Uh, brace yourself, Avalon. 
Okay, so the enemies are dead. I guide humanity between Keep your wits the stars. About you. I would like to loot this guy. What does he have? Andra Chainsword, not very good. The Pirate Scarf, funny to coercion, but minus five awareness. And uh, a Medicaid. Uh, I'm going to throw this into here. Doesn't seem. Ah, uh, hold on. Nah. There's a minus 5% penalty to armor. It's okay. It just doesn't do nearly enough damage. This is a much lower level uh, thing. Uh, anyways, we've got some goods here. Ooh. Mazoa Pattern Hand Flamer. That's actually not too bad. That might be for uh, Argento. And she can use that in her offhand. Adrenaline War Boots. At the start of the wearer's turn, they gain 20 dodge until the end of the round. Okay. We shall see. Okay. We'll I always have a backup plan. And uh, we'll look up here and see if there's anything to be found. So it looks like we, we got all of them. There's another door there. That's going to lead to somewhere. There's also a door here. It's going to also lead to somewhere. This is an alternate way in. Okay, so we could have taken that. I'm not sure what that would have uh, your eye on the prize. You never know. Okay, there's probably some goods there, so... We'll have a look. Nope, apparently not. But there's definitely some goods back here. Multi key, and a bunch of random crap, and a bunch of more stuff. But that's fine, because we are uh, basically out of stuff otherwise. Nothing else up here? Doesn't Rise seem like to it. The top, or get left in the dust. So, seems like that is our business with the Anvers done. So we're going to head and talk to the Liege Lord. In we go. Greetings, your ladyship. Do you have business with me? Vlandheim notices Jai standing behind you, and you see his jaw tightening with tension. And what are you doing here? Vlandheim, Vlandheim. You must have thought you were the only one on footfall who knew how to make friends. Today... Or told you I'd find a better deal. Ignoring Jai, Vladame pointedly addresses you. I'm sure your ladyship had reason for getting mixed up with a small fry like her. Perhaps you were amused by her false promises of quick profit. Or some more intimate aspects of such relationships. In any case, that's none of my business. Just remember that, here on Footfall, the only good deals worthy of your attention can only come from me. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. Jai has joined my retinue to atone for her misdeeds before the Emperor. <laughs> Glory to the Exalted One who cares for us all. Jai makes the sign of the Aquila over her chest with an uncharacteristically serious expression. Good, she's playing along. Vladime grimaces in vexation. In my experience, people like her to tend to turn a new leaf only when the door of the airlock shuts behind them and not a moment sooner. I did what you could not. I found and neutralized the Anvers Agitator in Chief. That is truly outs or that is a truly outstanding accomplishment, your ladyship. Footfall can now rest easy, at least until the next mad hoodlum makes himself known. Alright, guess we uh guess we go. How's everything? No uh no extra. I always keep my options stuff. open. Some XP. Okay. All right. Well, um, that's uh, that's gonna be all. We're going to uh, head to Dargonis in the next episode. Presumably, go to Act Three. Thought that would happen this episode, but there was a bit of sidetracking that needed to be done uh, at the party, which was admittedly pretty fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, drop this video a like if you have enjoyed it. I will catch you in the next one. The exalted one protects.